Ian, um, how does it feel um, to leave Tannadice knowing that you're the manager of a team who are top of the championship? Long way to go, but um, we've earned that right. Yeah, we have earned it. We've, um, we've won a, a really, really big game. Um, it was a big occasion as well. It was a lot of tests for us today in terms of how do we handle this occasion. A bigger crowd than we're used to playing against. Uh, playing against a very, very good team with a lot of experience. And also, see how we responded after you know, three games. Um, I think it's in eight days. And last time we had the third game, we drew it at home to Erdu. The boys were a bit leggy, but I think today we, we see the value and the depth that we have on the bench, which over the three games has got us through. Let's start at the most obvious point because it's um, it's worthy of all the discussion and praise we can throw. Is it? What was your view of the goal? What was the the motion in the the bench? Because you know that Dylan's got that in the locker. Um, at, at any moment he can produce it. Yeah, uh, I had a great view of it actually. Um, wonderful pass from Sam Stanton. Great run from Dylan. And you know some managers. Um, like their players to stay in position but I think when you've got a player like Dylan you have to give him a bit of a licence to go and do his own thing and then when he faces the players up he was 2v1 and then he got maybe got a wee bit um, I wouldn't say luck but the ricochet and then he faced up another player cut inside finish was wonderful the goalkeeper had absolutely no chance um, it was one of those ones where he just seen the ball hit the back of the net and Dylan can do that we've seen it numerous times now since he's joined Rafe Rovers he keeps producing he keeps um, working hard which is really really important and I think every player and manager in the, and myself in this league know what Dylan can do but it's how you stop Dylan because he's a live wire he, he keeps going again I allude back to um, my interview during the week if he misses three or four he'll go for the fifth one and that's what you need like many players in your team across many interviews what he puts across when we're discussing with him just recently there is that they all feel they can get better but not only that many of the players have commented to me across this season it's as at home as they felt in a football club and actually that's given a platform for them to kind of push themselves. Is that what you're seeing every day in training? Because we've got guys in their kind of mid and late 20s who are saying um, there's more to come. Yeah, I think there's, there's a few cases that we could we could point to for that, but the one that I looked at the moment is Jamie Gullen. Jamie obviously was um, had that wee niggle, which was really annoying him. You know, not, not just physical aspect, it was, it was doing his head in a little bit, and we couldn't get to the bottom of it, so we're all frustrated. He's come back like a man possessed. He, he's like an absolute animal, which is what you want to see, and fantastic. Um, but we've got other guys, you know, Ewan Murray's has a little bit, Lisa Lice, Scott Brown, you, go, you ask him to play anywhere in the park for you, you get the same performance, the same attitude, the same commitment, and I think you look to the boys on the bench today, your Aidan Collins of the world and Jack Hamilton's who are very, very unlucky not to be playing in this team this afternoon but frankly I could have picked anyone I was very, very comfortable with the squad that we have and very comfortable with the players as, as individuals their attitude towards that you know, and, and realising what we're trying to do in terms of a little bit of squad rotation nothing crazy just trying to help people's legs a little bit uh, their response you know, I said to them in there no, no amount of money in the world can buy it Talk to me about the kind of tactical ebb and flow of the game because you, you know, in terms of your approach, a couple of changes coming into the game, but it was a game that kind of unfolded in chapters from um, kind of sustaining a bit of an onslaught with, with balls being shelled at us, trying to express in the counter, trying to stretch. It seemed to be a bit of a game that had every um, dimension obvious. Yeah, it did. It was, it was a really good game. It was. It, it, there was a bit of quality in it at times, there was a bit of, bit of frantic pace in it at times, there was a few mistakes in it at times, as, as most games are. Our, our selection today was pretty much down to minutes on the park. You know, Aidan Collins done a lot of minutes um, since he came back from injury and it was a really um, hard pitch on Wednesday night to play on. Uh, Jamie Gullen brought in at the last minute, again, his first league start of the season, so we had to be careful with him as well. Jack only returned to training yesterday and, and he'd done very little, so we had to be careful with Jack as well in terms of, yeah, he, he says he's feeling alright, but we all know what it's like to be sick and your energy is really really down so we just felt it wasn't fair in jack um josh mullen comes in because he had he had legs from wednesday night and uh, louis vaughan had legs from wednesday night the only real tactical one i would say i'd done was scott brown at center half because he, although he played there on wednesday i just felt the pitch at tannadice was a lot better than our broth and i wanted us to be a bit more composed in the ball at the back um, especially if they came with a high press which which they actually didn't but we thought they might Talk to me about, um, you know, a, a lot of the focus of course will be on how we stretch the game, the goal, the, the game management, he's kind of um, running, not running down the clock, but creatively um, taking the clock to the end. But I, I, I think it would be wrong not to ask you to talk about the defensive performance. Um, there was a tackle from Ross Milne that he celebrated and the crowd celebrated more than I've seen vital cup goal scored that was utterly sensational. Yeah, well, I know the one you're talking about. It was a really poor decision by Ross in the first instance yeah. with a free kick. But like I say to the players, you make a mistake and there's nothing you can do, literally nothing you can do about it apart from make amends. And Ross done that. And that's, again, great character from Ross to do that. 
within the game I felt our back four were superb along with Sean Byrne just marshalling in front of his defence there uh, big Kevin goals yeah the kicking can improve we know that but it's a bit like Dylan you can't get everything you know Kevin's shot stopping is for me outweighs anything anything negative to him you know he's obviously becoming a really big player for us as well he pulls off one of the saves it was just a brilliant save that not a lot of goalies in this league get to so as a, as a collective we're very very happy with our performance today we're happy with how we're going along but the challenge is always what do we do next well the next thing I'm going to do is ask you about um, that absolute rammy behind the goals because uh, you know as, as I've said many times in interviews um, I'm an old hand at this uh, but looking down from the kind of crow's nest there at, at, at the celebrations at the backing at the kind of joy that was there I actually felt really privileged to have been handed the opportunity to, to, to be part of the, the kind of TV team how powerful is that for, for you it's you know if, You've got to bottle these moments, haven't you? Absolutely, I'm the same as you, David. I was, I felt privileged as well. Uh, the, the roar, when the, the noise, when the goal went in, was was ridiculous. Uh, you know, you don't often hear that. You know, that was that sounded like a lot more than two thousand odd um, people from Kirkcaldy and a lot of young guys in the crowd having a, having a good day out, as you do when you're that age. Um, but delighted, you know. I said before the game, when I sat on, on the bench with the staff, I said, look at that crowd, because look what it would have been last season. It wouldn't, it wouldn't have been anywhere close to that. Of course, the boys in the park are doing the business, but the supporters are helping us through everything all the time. It's, it's At the moment, it's amazing. We know it can dip at any point. Um, my only message to the supporters, and I'm sure they will, when, if that happens, then stick with us. I don't know how you can uh, drill down on it. The phrase I used with, with Dylan when I was chatting is, uh, there seems to be some kind of weird alchemy going on here that's, that's just made us all fall in love with football again um, kind of wider I guess than just um, our kind of love of Wraith Rovers does this kind of touch you in a, in a different way in terms of the kind of spread of your career are you able to just press the pause button and say yeah I'm having this I think you can do it for a very short time I think you have to sometimes sit back reflect and, and enjoy great moments and you always think there'll be another one but I know in football sometimes there's not you have to be patient but I, but I agree with you I think you know I think they're enjoying watching this team I'm enjoying watching it but it's down to the players, you know, that's the bottom line, the players are enjoying it and they're, they're so tightly bonded together on and off the park, which is an incredible thing to have, but the bond between the supporters and the players is, is absolutely huge as well. I've got no doubt today if Dungeon United scored a 95th minute equaliser, then that, that lot behind the, the goal would have clapped and cheered our team off. And I'm going to balance that by making sure that people know um, we're not running away with anything. You know, you, you don't celebrate uh, pre-Christmas, you don't celebrate post-Christmas. There's a lot of games um, still to come. But the, the positive aspect now is that we head home. A um, couple of games in quick succession. Um, it, it seems that this is a team that have managed to evade banana skins and keep the standards ridiculously high. Confident we can do that again on Friday and, and set up uh, set up time for Santa with a smile on her face. Yeah, again, like you say, we're not going to get too carried away. It's, it's a fantastic win, there's no doubt about it. We've set down a little marker, that's all we've done. We know Dungeon United, uh, Dunfermline, Partick Thistles, Inverness, and Morton are starting to come as well. This is an incredibly hard league. We've got a fantastic new year to look forward to. Um, regardless of what happens in the next two games, but my challenge to the players in there was two home games to go before the new year. Let's see where we are at the end of 2023. All we can do is keep trying to enjoy ourselves, keep enjoying our training, keep enjoying our, our match days and try to win football games. We know that football is going to kick us in the backside at some point. We know we'll have to uh, kind of roll with the punches, but for now, um, what an absolute pleasure it is to watch your team. Thank you.